And we welcome you to, uh, back to the uh, AFA Today studios in the uh, uh, heart of lower Manhattan, the belly of the news beast, as we like to call it here on AFA Today, uh, where we are uh, busily uh, watching the news go by on a day-to-day basis. What we've got uh, right in front of us is uh, uh, a very tricky situation on several different uh, levels of uh, the news today. You've got, for example... Uh, and by the way, my name is Kevin McCullough. If you would like to join the conversation, 888-589-8840. Uh, but for example, and I, 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 you know, point this out f- for a number of reasons, uh, all of which pain me. Uh, I was re-examining in my head this morning the route of action that we took in the situation with the Crimea, now that the Crimea has been annexed or is in process of being annexed back to Russia, I, I, was, I was going through the steps of what happened there and uh, how it happened and why it happened and, and, and all the rest. And I, I came to this, I don't know, disturbing reality that when we saw what took place in the Ukraine take place, for all of our uh, rumbly and my tumbly about uh, the uh, the importance of this and the democracy of that, and uh, we're going to put sanctions on this and that, and and f- for all of the <clears throat> response that we gave to the matter, that what we in essence ended up with was a dictator who was laughing at us, not a dictator supposedly. Um, but but the the head of a state that was laughing at us, like literally laughing at us, calling the pres calling our president the prankster, in the last twenty four hours. Um. And when you think about what they did by way of offering to help the Ukraine, the first thing that happened with John Kerry was what. He ended up on the ground in the Ukraine with the American people's checkbook saying, let's bail you out. Now, I'm just looking at this from the average logical uh, perspective, which which may get me in trouble, I admit. But here you have uh, a nation that is uh, struggling with the, uh, you know, the, the, the wrongful, take over as they perceive it to be in the uh, in the in you know interference with uh, with Russia getting into their affairs and then out of a response to their actions uh, by free people that threw off who they had etc cetera, etc cetera, they decided uh, that you know Russia then decided well we're gonna go uh, we're gonna go annex uh, the the Crimea and our response was twofold international weakness, and a bailout, us printing money for another country to be bailed out with. Now, this doesn't have anything to do and is no reflection upon uh, the the goodness of the Ukrainian people, the rightness of their uh, desire to have democracy and their right to, their right to be represented in government by a person of their choosing, their right to to, to hold their uh, elected officials accountable to, to the uh, letter of their law. Uh, they, they, as a sovereign nation, that's all well and good, and I, and I applaud all of that. I just thought it was odd that the first two things we do is create abject comedy falling all over ourselves on the world stage uh, trying to, uh, quote, hold someone accountable, uh, and going from there, to um, to to a bailout process where we were going to you know pump millions of dollars into the Ukraine, and I just it's it's it may be narrow sight it may be narrow minded it may be short sighted I'm not sure some of you will probably agree or disagree with me, but if those are the two reactions we have to most international crises we may as well just give up America because we don't have anything left. Our word doesn't mean anything on the national stage, but when we show up with a checkbook, then we're treated with relative respect. It's just, it was just an odd reality that hit me this morning 
as I was actually uh, uh, buzzing around trying to get to the studio and, and get prepared for today's broadcast. But uh, we don't have to talk about that. 888-589-8840. Uh, big thanks to everybody yesterday uh, at the American Bible Society. Uh, Kevin Sorbo and David A.R. White uh, came and spent some time with us. Uh, and it was just a, a delightful time, and uh, I don't know if you're planning on seeing the movie God's Not Dead this weekend when it opens, but it sure does look interesting, and I hope that uh, if you haven't yet made plans to do so, that you will uh, consider doing that. We've got a lot of things that uh, I want to get to uh, by way of news as as, as well today, and, and one of them has to do with uh, what we are beginning to see with the issue of the Affordable Care Act. Now, on the front page of the foxnews.com website, there is a story that if it is one-tenth as bad as what they're reporting, if it's one-tenth as bad, then I think we are going to be uh, in serious, serious trouble uh, because this is a man who did exactly what he was told to do. And I'll, I'll get into those details in a little bit. Um, you know, every week on Mondays I've, I've pledged that we're going, to, uh, we're going to do something different this year that we are going to take that time on Monday to pursue something that I feel like contributes to the real solution for where we're at, the real solution for what our problems are. And that is to take a time out, just to say for a couple of minutes, hey, we're going to think about something other than the, the front page of the newspaper today, at least for these few minutes, and that is we're going to focus on prayer. Now, at the beginning of the year, uh, Pastor Jim Cimbala joined me. We had a discussion about uh, prayer. We had a discussion about why it's so important that people pray. This last week, people were uh, sending me emails and Facebook messages, and they were saying, "Kev, you're uh, you're always you're always touting America's greatness, and you're not you you don't do this or do that, and and why are you so um, uh, obsessed with American nationalism?" And I said, "That's funny. I don't really think that's what I do." Uh, they said, "Well, you didn't you don't listen to your you, to yourself when you're on your show." I uh, said everything has to do with how good America's supposed to be, and you know, uh, you know why why we're not there. I said I, I don't think that's what we do. I, I think I think that what we do is we we take the stuff of the day and we try to obliterate the confusion that kind of permeates it because that confusion is there for one reason: it's to keep you from knowing what the truth is. So if we obliterate the confusion and amplify the truth, then we can pursue clarity. And at the end of the day, we've got we've got something different. Uh, in our lives than we had when we started. And one of the ways I think that we're, we're going to uh, attempt to bring that clarity about is to continue to use prayer as a piece of our daily conversation, our daily dialogue with the God who made us, asking him to intervene in our lives, asking him to intervene in our world, asking him to intervene uh, in our communities, in our churches, in, in, our, in the life of who we are. Because that is actually where the solution to, to most of the problems comes from. We have a God who is capable of completely changing any circumstance that, that we can dream of. The question as to whether or not he will is not something that we can decide. But the question of whether or not he wants us to pray about asking him to intervene is indisputable. You cannot come up with an argument against it. That's why uh, this week, if you if you signed up for the uh, for the prayer focus, you didn't get it yesterday on Monday. It's the first week out of the eleven weeks we've done this that we delayed it till Tuesday, and that was because of our special broadcast with Kevin Sorbo yesterday. But um, let, let me ask you a question: Are you still praying this deep into the year? maybe the new year came along and you said, well, I'm going to make prayer a focus for my life this year. And, and yeah, this, the, the, uh, the prayer guides from uh, pastor Simbola are helping a lot from the Brooklyn tab. Kevin's reminding me at the beginning of the week, we're going to do this, but I'm really going to make sure that we, that we pray and then slowly see the uh, intensity behind it just kind of ebb away. There's a lot of people that, that that happens to. So you're not the only one. But as you know, we're spending this year coming alongside a man and a church that is coming alongside of us. The Brooklyn Tabernacles people that, that worship, they're, they're coming alongside of us. Uh, they're praying with us as we are praying with them. So what you have is you have a church of a few thousand uh, connected to 
uh, a few thousand radio listeners that are that are praying for one another, that are using the same emphasis in what they're praying about. They're not praying the same thing, by the way. We, we, we fully believe that uh, it's not necessary to dictate to you what to pray. We're just giving you some guided suggestions and say, hey, weave this into your prayer life for this week. That's what the rest of these tens of thousands of people are doing. Each week, Pastor Symbola is giving us an opportunity to, to, to put that focus right into the weave of the fabric of our prayer life. So recently, Pastor Jim was speaking, and this is what he said. He said, God isn't going to use us unless we are filled with the same love that sent Jesus to the cross. Now, we're in the midst of Lent. We're, we're on that very methodical progression uh, to the Holy Week. What's going to happen of, uh, on the Holy Week? How are we going to commemorate uh, the final hours of Jesus' life and his final days of ministry? How will we go about doing that? That's, that Lent is a, a season that is, uh, from the, the standpoint of the history of the church, the opportunity for us to prepare our hearts for God to do something in the midst of, of our lives as we prepare to observe those commemorations. Well, kind of in keeping with what sent Jesus to the cross, Pastor Jim says, God isn't going to use us unless we are filled with the same love that sent him to the cross. How deep was the love that God had for you? If what it meant for him to have a relationship with you required the sacrifice of his only son. That's a pretty simple and straightforward question, but it's not one that we get asked very often. How deep must the love of God be for you if in order to maintain a relationship with you, the price that he would have to pay to make that relationship possible would be that he would sacrifice his own son in order to make that happen, at least uh, at a single place and point in time. How deep must his love be for you if that is the case? Well, what Pastor Simbler reminds us of is a very profound truth in a single sentence. God isn't going to use us unless we are filled with the same love that sent Jesus to the cross. How deep was that love? Sacrificial. It was demonstrative. It was giving of his own family and life and things that he cherished for the benefit and welfare of others. So as you're in this Lenten week in the lead up to Holy Week and you're going through this process of praying through your week, let me encourage you to do something. Pray that God would instill within you the same love that he had when he sent Jesus to the cross to become the sacrifice for all of our sins, to become the, uh, the, the price paid so that our relationship with him could be restored. Friends, that's a deep, deep love. If you've ever had kids, if you've ever had children, you, you, you get a little glimpse of what the depth of that love was. But if he loved you that much, friends, um, let's ask him. We want to be used, God. We do. We want to be used for your purposes. But we know you won't use us unless we love other people the same way that you loved us to the degree that you sacrificed for us. So God, make in us that kind of love today. And then my final piece of encouragement for this week is watch how he uses it. The same love. Ask him for it. If you would like to get the uh, prayer focuses uh, once a week in your inbox, uh, just go to uh, pray2014.com, pray2014.com, and say, hey, hit me with that prayer focus each week. And then pray through the year with us. I'm Kevin McCullough. This is AFA Today on AFR Talk. Don't go away.